what's going on everybody it's your boy drew the wolf of saint pete and today i'm going to be teaching you how to make a custom tufted rug i'm going to show you how to use this and this to make something like this let's get it started all right so our first step is we got to stretch our cloth onto our tufting frame this is called primary tufting cloth i get it off of amazon I will leave links for everything in the description. You wanna make sure your cloth is as tight as you can possibly get it. You basically want it to sound like a drum when you tap on it. I usually line up the lines so that they go straight up and down, but you kinda of just wanna work around the edges one side at a time until you get it as straight as you can and as tight as you can. Trust me. Spending more time on this step now helps you a lot in the long run. I usually will just kind of get a rough draft up on there and then I'll go back around and tighten. You want to try to get the lines as straight as you can. It's a hassle, but it's worth it. Oh yeah, she getting there already. She getting there already. She's basically almost there, but I'm a perfectionist, so. The corners are tough, but that looks damn straight and damn good to me. I'll get you up close so you can hear it. Here's another little tip that you might not find unless you're looking really, really hard. Whenever you're working with glues, you want to make sure it's ventilated. You want to grab yourself some of this. Spray glue. It's called Loctite. Basically what I like to do, if you kind of go around. And I like to Loctite the edges here. And I feel like it keeps it from unstretching a little bit better. Bada bing bada boom. Let's get to tracing. All right, so now what we're gonna need to project the image onto the cloth is a projector. I just got a cheap one on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. I hook it up to my Surface Pro, which is like a little laptop slash tablet thing, and I project it right on there and trace it up. So let's get it. All right, so this rug is supposed to be two feet by two feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it up and make sure we got the right size. Boom, 24 by 24. All right, we finished the outline. Now we're just gonna do the letters. So these are the three colors I think I'm gonna go with. We got more of like a light pink, a darker pink, and then kind of a darker red for the outline. When you buy your yarn, I usually use a 100% acrylic. I like this brand, it's called uh, Red Heart. And I'll show you how to turn them into what's called a yarn cake using a yarn winder. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon, I'll leave the link in the description. But essentially you just feed your yarn through the end here and then you place it into this little slot here. You wanna kinda of give it a little bit of tension, but pretty much as you wind it, it's gonna spin it up into a perfect yarn cake. You don't want it to be too tight or too loose, so you can kind of experiment with how much pressure you're pulling on it as it goes. Okay. 
But yeah, <clears throat> you're just gonna keep spinning till you're to the point of the cake is big enough, or as big as you want. I'm only doing some very small, thin lines, so I don't need a ton. Let me grab my scissors. But you're basically just gonna cut it. Grab your end here. I usually will just fold it over a couple times like that. Tighten it up and then boom, pull it out the top. Slide it off. You got yourself a little yarn cake. So when I tuft and uh, what a lot of other people do is they do two strands at the same time. So you're going to want to make two cakes of each color that you're going to use. And boom. Now I'm going to show you guys how to thread the tufting gun, which is what we have right here in front of us. I've been using this tiny little threader tool thing. I know some people have bigger ones. This is just what I've been used to using. You want to slide it in. There's a little tiny hole in the middle of the needle up here. Pretty much you're just going to slide it through there. You want to take your two strands of yarn. You're going to fold them. You're going to feed them through the metal eye hook hole thingy. And then basically you're just going to feed them straight through the, uh, the threader like that. And then once you pull it out, Boom, and now the gun's threaded. I'll show you guys my yarn setup, uh, yarn feeder setup next. So pretty much how I have it is, um, I've got two little eyelet hooks up here, and it feeds down to my little yarn cakes, and then the yarn feeds on into the gun. A lot of people were saying that the right side is where you want the yarn feeder to go. But I found that the left side makes it way, way, way better. But it's really just up to you. Now I'm gonna show you how to tuft. Usually I like to start with the inside first and then I work my way out. You can carve in between colors, it saves a lot of time. When you're tufting, you wanna make sure you put a very adequate amount of pressure against the cloth so the gun doesn't kick back and so it flows smoothly while you're tufting your lines, doing curves. When you're doing curves, you usually want to tap instead of just holding down the trigger because it helps you have more control over the gun while you're tufting. Make sure the gun is on, of course. <laughs> Boom. So see how I tapped it when I went around the curve? You want to use the middle of the tufting gun as your guide. You can pretty much go any direction as long as the tufting gun is facing that direction. Your left hand is usually going to be on this extra little handle here and this can spin all the way around. Boom, so that's pretty much the outline. I usually like to outline everything. That's pretty much the outline there, boom, and then we'll just uh, fill her in. When you're filling in colors, it's best to go straight up and down if possible. Try not to go, I mean you can go side to side too, but straight up and down is usually best. Usually you want to skip about one little space on the cloth, and then you fill in the next one. It really depends, some people, this is kind of a debate in the community, but. 
some people say you should leave no space in between, but I found that a very small amount of space is still adequate. So I'm just going in here. Filling them in. It looks a lot faster on Instagram. <laughs> Boom. It's looking good already. Main thing is just make sure you're putting in a lot of pressure. You want the cloth to kind of push back against you. Sweet. Now that we got this pink up, I'm going to flip the frame around and I'm going to show you guys how to carve on the frame just using a pair of scissors. You can also use the clippers that I'm going to be using later to shave the rug, but honestly I found it easier most of the time to just use scissors. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be carving down these shapes so that when I go to do the other colors, they don't blend together as easily and the lines are a lot cleaner. It saves a lot of time in the end. I'll show you. So we're pretty much just trimming off the excess to create a more defined shape. I found scissors to be a little bit safer than using the clippers too, because I have cut holes in my cloth with the clippers. So that already looks a lot cleaner compared to the other side. You looking crispy. I should probably be wearing a mask. And you should probably wear a mask too when you do this, because I can't imagine these little particles are healthy.
Yo, so I finished tufting the rest of the colors. <clears throat> I patched up the hole here using a video from another tufting YouTuber that I found. I'll leave the link. I'm just going to glue her up and we're going to let the glue dry for about, I usually do about 12 hours if I leave the door open and I have a fan on it. Um, but if you don't, 24 hours is usually good. The glue that I usually use, it's called uh, Roberts 3095. It's a big tub that I have down here. Otherwise, I'd pick it up and show you. But I'll leave a link for that in the description as well. Yo, it's me again. Now we're just going to cut this bad boy off and I'll show you how to do the backing. Pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to go around the edge. We're going to cut the fabric to the yarn. Make sure you don't cut the yarn. And then we're going to do this pretty much every, about every inch or so. We're just going to cut a straight line directly through. And I'll show you. So what these are going to do is we're going to fold these over. It's going to create a nice look. We're just going to do this all the way around. And then something nice about the 3095, Robert's 3095 that I use is even when it's dry like this, it's still a little bit tacky. So you can almost just take these edges and just straight fold them over onto the glue and it'll stick. We're just folding over the edges till the yarn just starts to curl just a little bit. Now we're just going to grab the backing. So I have two types of backing that I use. So here I have just a basic felt fabric that I got from Joann's. I'll either use this usually or a non-slip backing. Depends if the person specifies or not. Otherwise, I usually just have whatever I have on hand. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it back about halfway. We're going to take our spray glue, spray adhesive. This one is Loctite. I really like this one. Or you can also use Gorilla Glue, but I like this one better. You should make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. I have a door open to my left, but make sure you definitely have a mask. I'm just, I'm a savage, so... I'm basically just going to spray it. Make sure you cover everywhere. And you're going to want to let it set for about a minute to 30 seconds. You want to spray both sides. We're gonna let that sit. And then we're just gonna fold her on over. I like to use the can to uh, flatten it out. Just make sure there's no nothing on the can, like glue. Then we're just gonna repeat on the other side.
Let that sit for a sec. Cool, we're gonna let that dry for a little while and I'll be back. Now we grab our trusty clippers and we're gonna level this bad boy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our custom rug. Since we carved it beforehand on the frame, look at that. Clean. If you guys want to see more types of videos like this, let me know in the comments. And happy tufting.